Physics Olympics. Hope you have your ticket because today we went to the Physics Olympics. Hopefully you worked in pencil and maybe you used a calculator. All right. You should have your homework back. I returned it to you in class. If you were absent, please tell me that when you turn it in when you return to class. All right, you had five minutes per station and you visited five Physics Olympics events. Hopefully you didn't forget that vectors have a direction. Okay, then you turned them in. And then we talked a little bit about how you went about solving them. And it turns out, in all six class periods of AP Physics, somebody drew a picture. So, huh, why would a picture help you put the pieces together? Well, sometimes drawing a picture helps you figure out what's going on. This is going to be especially true when the motion changes during the problem, or when there's multiple stages of motion, and Eventually, when there are two dimensions to the motion, having the picture will definitely help. So before things get complicated, we're going to try to learn this skill. All right, so here's kind of what you should be including in a motion diagram. Each stage of the motion, all right, needs an arrow. Draw it in the direction of the motion, okay, because then when you start talking about speeds and velocities, you don't have to worry about the directions, they're already there. You can just go with magnitudes, okay? Because you are going to want to label those arrows for each stage with as much information as you have for each stage. Because, to be honest, in a word problem, it can be kind of hard to, at a glance, figure out what's going on, and especially if there's multiple questions asked about the same scenario. So, if you label velocities at any point you're given them, or average speed or average velocity for the uh, certain stage of the motion, put that on there. If it gives you the time, all right, put that there too. Eventually, if the velocity is changing, we'll want to know if it's getting bigger or smaller, or, well, if it's changing direction, or it might get complicated. But for now, just know that if velocity changes, we'll have to indicate that too. Okay, if you know any distances, you can draw them. If you want to draw them to scale, that's cool, but you don't have to. Okay, also, if there's any overarching information like a total elapsed time, or a total distance, or a final displacement, anything that's relevant, put it somewhere on there. Okay, it might help to label the end of one arrow as start. All right, and then when you get to the end, label it end, or finish, or start and stop, or initial and final. It's kind of up to you, all right? There's definitely some leeway. So, we're going to practice this a little bit as we go through, as we get a little more complicated problems next week. All right, that's really all there was today. Your homework, nothing tonight, okay? Your project is still due next Thursday, and just as a reminder, if you want to research a physicist other than one of the ones on the project sheet, please let me know ahead of time so I can approve them. Your vector mastery quiz, recommended due date is next Wednesday, but it will remain open through October 24th, just like the rest. I do understand that as of when I record this, it's still not showing you results, but as soon as I publish this to YouTube, I'm going to go fix that. Also, if you have a drawing compass at home, you might have used this in geometry, okay? Please bring it to class on Friday. We're going to be working on adding vectors in class. For your final activity of the day, you drew a motion diagram of this scenario, which was one of the problems out of the homework. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions. Have a good one.